You will be reproached and you will suffer and it will be hard. That was the very first thing in the school of God that the Lord showed me. And I've had it with me ever since. And I've braced, my, I've braced myself for tribulation. And because of that, I have endured to this day. Because I knew that I must suffer, that I will suffer. That if I do not suffer, I'm not in the right way. I'm not following the right Christ. He is the master and the servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted the master of the household, how much more they have his own household. So number one, brethren, you must understand this is normal Christianity. To suffer. If you suffer with him, you shall reign with him. If you're not suffering with him, you're not with him, brother. We have been called to suffer. And it says in 1 Corinthians 10, verse 15, There is no temptation taking you, but such as is common to men. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, but will, with the temptation, make a way of escape. And many times, more times than I can tell you all right here, when I have been tempted and I have been tried, and I have been hardly able to go on, it has been because I have been astonished at the suffering. And I thought this is too much. I thought this could not be the Lord. That God could not be calling me to do this. That this must be me. I must have gone amiss. And so I don't embrace that tribulation. And so I get offended suddenly in my heart. And so I begin to sink and faint and falter from the grace of God. And so for me to renew my mind, to be renewed in the spirit of my mind, in this point it's necessary for me to endure afflictions. It is necessary, brother, you would understand this is normal Christianity, what you are suffering. And God is on the throne, and God is sovereign, and God is in control. And you have to remember God is in control, and you've been appointed to this. And before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now have I kept thy word. Psalm 119. And when you understand this is normal Christianity, and you understand my second point, this is good, suffering is good, then you can say like the psalmist in Psalm 119 again, he says, I know, O Lord, that thou art right or righteous, and that thou in faithfulness hast afflicted me. Because you know that your master hath trod me steps. And you know that the apostle Paul hath trod me steps, the old past. And you know that this is the way of life. You know that this is for your good. This is normal Christianity. Beloved, 1 Peter 4 it says, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fire trial, which is to try as though some strange thing happened unto you. Because we are inclined to think that it is strange. It is strange. That it is abnormal. That it is not normal Christianity. But this is normal Christianity. The whole reason for the book of 1 Peter. The whole reason in 1 Peter chapter 5, we know what the reason is. Paul says that I have written these things, that you might know that this is the true grace of God wherein you stand. And brethren, when I was anointed to preach the word of God in January 11, 2009, before that time... I was astonished that God was telling me to deny myself and humble myself and embrace the crosses he was telling me to embrace in my flesh. I thought this cannot be the Lord and my parents wouldn't tell me that it was the Lord and none of the false Christian charismatics that we were around would tell me it was the Lord. No apostate Christian would tell me that it was the Lord. But I talked to Sean and I talked to Jake and they weren't against it being the Lord. My flesh was against it being the Lord. God was telling me to lose my life, deny myself, Take up my cross and follow him in a way that it hurt, that it was hard. It was not an inherently sinful thing. He was telling me to deny, and I fought against it so many times. I went back and forth. Oh, God, is this you? And then God would show me every single time, that is me. I am telling you to do that. Embrace tribulation. Pick up your cross. This is normal Christianity. I'd read the Bible, and I'd read Spurgeon, and I'd read John Bunyan. And I would know this is normal Christianity. And I was able to follow Christ. I was able to obey the Spirit of God. I was able to go on with the Lord. But I, if I thought this was abnormal, and this could not be God, and it's the devil, and no way God would have me do this or want me to do this, it's making me so weak and so poor and so unable to do what I want to do. And I would think, I feel that if I do this, it's going to hinder my evangelism. I feel if I do this, I won't be as strong as I am before. And that's a good thing. That's a good thing. 
that his strength might be perfected in my weakness. He gave me that when I went to my dad's ranch. And I'm praying and crying out, oh God, is it you, Lord? Is it you, Lord? And all I have ringing in my mind is by myself on this ranch, just walking and pacing and walking back and forth. I just met Jake and Sean just before this. And I have 2 Corinthians 12, 7 through 10 in my heart the whole time. That's all that God tells me. He says, and my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect. Ways. Therefore, I will rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Hallelujah. And when I did glory in the infirmities, the power of Christ did rest upon me. But when I was double-minded, and when I was thinking, is this the Lord? Do I need this? Is my flesh that wretched that I need to be this weak, that I might trust in his strength, that his strength might perfect it in my weakness, that he might confess his own name for me and get all the glory? When I would doubt it, I couldn't embrace it. I couldn't bear it. And that's why Paul is telling Timothy, if you have not been given a spirit to be in fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind, be not ashamed of the Lord, nor of me as prisoner, but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel by the power of God. Square up and embrace yourself. Embrace Amen. tribulation. Embrace the cross with both hands. Not with a wavering, double-minded spirit, or you will faint. And that's why many are fainting, brethren. That's why the murmuring comes and the complaining comes. And you provoke the Lord because you're not wholehearted. And if you were just going head on and you were just embracing the cross with both hands, you would have the power of God with you. You would have the joy and speak and full of glory. You would enjoy the spoiling of your goods. Joyfully, you would endure it. Glorious suffering. Glorious running in the wilderness from the authorities and the freezing cold and scum and the moors of Scotland and the mountains and the hills and the rain and the hail and the ice storm. Glorious cross. Glorious crucified life. Glorious Christ. Glorious valuable work that he's working in me through this. Hallelujah. He speaks so well of it. Praise the Lord. Lord. He was so thankful for it because he knew it was just temporary. It was just a shadow in light of such a great eternity. And it meant something. And it did something. And it was good. And it was good. Or you can't go on with Christ. Forget about the great tribulation. You will perish. You will fall away. You will not endure unto the end. If you do not see the value of suffering, the whole New Testament all over the place, not just the book of Hebrews or First Peter, the whole New Testament is trying to justify the suffering that we through much tribulation must inherit the kingdom of God. We must. There's no other way. God can do his will and have his way, and that is to save your soul from sin. By this grace, the grace of God. We must suffer, brethren. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 11 through 12. The Apostle Paul's last epistle that he wrote. And he's telling Timothy, the one that he was discipling, his son of the common faith, whom he loved. His last words, some of his last words. He felt it necessary to tell him this. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and... Verse 10, thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, patience, persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra, what persecutions I endured. But out of them all the Lord delivered me, yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. In the context, he is comparing the way of Christ, the way of the cross versus these enemies of the cross, false prophets, and their way where they deny the cross, they deny the suffering, they deny the gospel. Not Paul. He says, Timothy, you know how I suffered. And that's not light suffering. That is part of the suffering where he was stoned and left for dead in Acts chapter 14. This is where men were trying to assault his life, where he was having to flee out of the city. That was his cue to leave the city, was they were making an attempt at his blood. Thank you. It is my reasonable service under the pain of everlasting death to stand for the truth. No matter what, you know why I said that? Because I'd rather do testimony. And I knew in this evil generation, I knew it. I knew it that if we go through with God, we're going to be forsaken of all. 
So did these brothers, because they had read the New Testament. And if you're going to go through with God, you're going to suffer, brother. Brace yourself for that suffering. And if you brace yourself, somebody's about to push you, you won't fall over if you're bracing yourself. And if you brace yourself for this suffering, by the grace of God, you shall endure it. God will give you strength. God will help you have through bearing grace unto the end, brethren. And that day of death will be the best day of your life. As it says in Ecclesiastes, the day of death is better than the day of one's life. I'm sorry, the day of death is better than the day of one's birth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah for the cross. Hebrews chapter 12. This is my close. This is my close. Hebrews chapter 10. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. But call to remembrance the former days in which after you were illuminated, ye endured a great fight of afflictions. Hardly. While she became a gazing stock, a gazing stock, both by reproaches and by afflictions and reproaches. That's number one. Your personal suffering, your personal cross that you're bearing, and these afflictions, as Jake was saying, that are broad sweeping, these afflictions that you're personally enduring. That is one aspect of the cross that you must endure. The second part of the cross, the second aspect, is the next part of the verse. And ye became companions of them that were so used. You must endure the cross of embracing fellowship with those that also are being evilly entreated and being defamed. The true saints of God, as much as you did do it, on oh, at least he's my brother, you did do it in me, as much as you did do it, at least he's my brother, you did not do it in me. You cannot forsake the Apostle Paul. And everybody else does and go to heaven. You cannot do that. God is with Paul. Paul is a faithful man. You are being given over to a delusion. You're forsaking Paul without a cause. You're not even hearing about. You think you're justified because you heard a bunch of slanders. You are not justified for saying the Apostle Paul. Because God is with Paul. Don't be ashamed of Paul. Don't be ashamed of the Lord Jesus Christ and his sufferings. Embrace it, Timotheus. Embrace it, Timotheus. But all the other nation forsook the Apostle Paul. Were they going to heaven, those men? I don't believe it. I don't believe that they were. Those men. Then he speaks of another man that did help him, was not ashamed of his chain. His name was Epaphroditus. He went out of his way in Rome, and he helped him, and he ministered him, and he ministered to Ephesus. And Paul is saying, oh God, remember him in that great day of Christ. You know what he did for me. You know what he did for me. You deny his people, brethren. You deny him. You deny his people. You are in trouble with the Lord Jesus Christ, who is in those people. For ye had compassion of me and my bonds, and took joyfully the spoiling of your goods, knowing in yourselves that ye you have in heaven a better and an enduring substance. Cast not away, therefore, your confidence which hath great recompense of reward. For ye have need of patience, that after ye have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise. For yet a little while, and he that shall come will come, and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in them. But we are not of them that draw back under perdition. Those that will lead to the saving of the soul. We are going to suffer in America we are going to see days like they saw, brethren. It is coming upon us. The situation that we're in right now in America is so very similar to what was happening in Jerusalem in that day. So very similar. That day, the axe that was laid at the root of the trees was the Roman. The Romans. This day, the axe that is laid at the root of the trees is the Russians and Chinese and whoever else God shall send unless America repents, starting with American Christ false Christianity professing apostate, denying the Lord Jesus Christ that bought them Christianity. <clears throat> he that cometh will come, shall not tear, endure. And I believe the fires are going to be heated up. I believe against us like they were against these Hebrews. And this word is going to be very, very relevant. And we need to endure until that time. The Russians will come and the Chinese will come and whoever else is with them unless America repents. Unless the false Christians repent, 
But it got worse and worse for the Hebrews. And the persecution got worse and worse. And God was getting angry. He already was angry. And they did not regard the day of their visitation. They did not regard the work of God. And so God did not regard them. And he sent the Romans. And they came with such ferocity. They came with such relentless, ruthless fierceness, brethren, against those Jews that it is fearful to read. The book of Josephus speaking about the Jewish-Roman wars in 77 AD, or 67 AD to 70 AD. It is fearful. The pitilessness, the mercilessness, and the terror that fell. 30 years or so after they denied Christ. And then they denied Paul and James and all the others. And their time was coming if they didn't repent. They didn't repent. They didn't repent. May the Lord have mercy. Keep us, brethren. He that cometh will come and shall not tarry. Judgment is coming. Judgment is coming. Sooner than we think. The dawn of heaven The summer morn I sigh for The 